Hello everyone and welcome back to Introduction to Number Theory. In previous videos uh, we've learned about primitive root and we also know that it exists uh, modular every prime number. Uh, to be more precise, modular every prime number there exists a primitive root. For different prime numbers primitive roots are different, may be different. In this video, I would like to show you several examples how you can use primitive roots to solve different tasks or problems. In the first example, uh, we see a circle around which we should arrange numbers from 1 to 12, such that for every, for each three numbers in a row, uh, a, B, and C, where B is the middle one. A, C, A multiplied by C minus B squared, should be divisible by 13. Quite an unusual condition, A, C minus B squared should be divisible by 13. Well, as you know, there are really many possibilities how we can arrange uh, 12 elements in a circle. It's 12 factorial divided by 12, maybe divided by 2. Uh, so there is no chance we can find such an arrangement just by uh, checking different cases. We need to think. <clears throat> and here thinking might uh, be done by translating the problem into uh, congruence modular 13. What does it mean? AC minus B square should be divisible by 13. It means that AC, it means that AC should be congruent to B square modular 13. And when such a property holds for every triple of elements, then this sequence is called a geometric progression. So all we need to do is form a geometric progression of numbers 1 to 12 modular 13. But how? How to form a geometric progression modular 13? Well, we know that uh, each of these elements is, represent, is represented as primitive root to some power k, where k is equal from 0 to 11, because g to the power of 12 is equal to g to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Each of these elements is some power of g. And if we need a geometric progression consisting of these elements, then all we need to do is form an arithmetic progression consisting of powers. So simply arrange g to the power of 0, g to the power of 1, g to the power of 2, and so on, g to the power of 11. You may notice that in this, uh, well, this is a geometric progression and powers form an arithmetic progression, but you may notice that this geometric progression is actually circle-wise, because um, g to the power of well let's check let's just check this uh, g to the power of 11 square will it be congruent modular 13 to g to the power 0 multiplied by g to the power 10 well, g to the power 22 uh, is 
the same as g to the power 22 minus 12. 22 minus 12 is 10. And this is exactly what we have on the, what we have on the right hand side. So <clears throat> it's a circular geometric progression. And now all we need to do is find the primitive root modulo 13 and raise it to all the powers consequently and write the obtained remainders modulo 13 in a circle. How do we find uh, primitive root modulo 13? Well, there are some algorithms, rather complicated. Dealing with such a small modulo as 13, the easiest thing to do is just check several uh, cases. <clears throat> As in previous video, you can just take uh, 2, raise it to the powers 3, raise it to different powers 4, and so on, until you find the remainder, which generates all the other remainders. But let me make this work a bit easier for you by telling that uh, actually it's enough to check uh, well if you take uh, h remainder h which may be or maybe not a primitive root and you want to check whether it is or is not then just raise it to power 6 to 0, h to the power 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. h to the power 6 should be congruent to minus 1 because every for every h, every h raised to the power 12 will be congruent to 1. So h to the power 12 divided by 2, h to the power 6, will be congruent to either 1 or minus 1. If it's congruent to 1, then of course h is not a primitive root. And <clears throat> if it's congruent to uh, minus 1, and all these remainders are different, then h is a primitive root. Use this, but prove it by yourself. Now I would like to show two more examples. Suppose you wish to uh, determine how many a's there are such that this equation has a solution. We don't need to solve this equation. We just need to, we don't need to find all such a's. We just want to know how many of them are there. Well, 101 is a prime number. So we know that there is a primitive root modular 101. Denote this primitive root as g. So let g be a primitive root modular 101. And we know that a, every remainder a, is congruent or equal to some power of g. And also is x. Well, if this equation has a solution, this modular equation, if it has a solution, then its solution can also be represented as some power of g, say uh, kappa. Then, then, uh, since x to the power 3 should be congruent to a, g to the power 3 times kappa should be congruent to g to the power k. Uh, kappa can be arbitrarily, k, be k can be arbitrarily. This holds modulo 101. 
but this equation here is equivalent to 3 kappa being congruent to k modular 100. Why 100? Because 100 is Euler's function of 101. Because 100 is the order of the primitive root model 101. Well, this is uh, the main cause. So all you need is the number of remainders modulo 100 such that there exists some other remainder kappa that this equality holds. Not, not equality, equality modulo 100. But since 3 and 100 are mutually prime, then uh, 3 is a reversible element, modulo 100. So for every k there is exists kappa. You know what this means? This means that for every a there is a solution. Nice result. But what if the degree of this equation was 5, not 3? In this case, we would obtain on the last step not such congruence, but 3 kappa congruent to, uh, sorry, not 3, but 5 kappa congruent to k modular 100. But 5 and 100 are not mutually prime, actually 100 is divisible by 5. And in this case, uh, there are only 20 such k that kappa exists. So we know that this equation here, modular equation, is solvable for only 20 residues, 20 remainders, modular 101. And of course, remainder 0 is not considered here. Why? Because 0 is not a power of a primitive root. 0 stands aside. Of course, if a is equal to 0, then x exists.